thought we had done this. We did. I thought we did talk. We did on lecture. I don't think you showed us, though, for lab. In lab. Okay. Well, we're going to run through this just so you can kind of aware of the way it works. This is the uh, verbal arch, and it, it runs in a, a uh, unilateral, bilateral fashion. I like the unilateral better than the bilateral uh, projection for this. Yeah. I know we did this. You talked about it. You never showed us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to do it. Today. I'm sure you didn't show us in lab. I'm sure you did. Yeah, not I remember you talking about. I remember you were saying yeah. you like the unilateral do that. Yes, I do remember that. Can you right. just do it again now? Yes, I will. Uh, so it's typical of film, lengthwise. It's a 40 inch film focal distance. Uh, again, we're going to adjust for tube tilt because we do use that. 75 kV, same patient projection or pre preparation that we'd always you know, do, common sense stuff, you know, jewelry glasses, whatever. Um, the patient is supine, and these are usually done on the table. It's kind of hard to do them when the patient's standing. And for the unilateral view, we're going to turn the patient's head out of the way. For the bilateral projection, the head's just going to be perpendicular, you know, sagittal plane perpendicular to the image receptor. So that's the difference between unilateral and bilateral as far as patient position. You either turn your head out of the way. And what we're trying to do with the unilateral is get the mandible out of the way. This is the bilateral projection here. You can see how the, the light is going to project here, and then it's going to, you know, because the light hits the chin, the chin, you know, the mandible, the mandible is going to be projected down onto the cervical spine. If we rotate the head 45 degrees out of the way, we'll get the mandible off the cervical spine. So I prefer the unilateral for that reason, uh, but again, they're showing the picture here in the bilateral. The collimation, we want, again, the lower cervical spine. We're not going to get the upper cervical spine there. And it's going to vary here a little bit, depending on central ray. We're going to use less tube tilt for the uh, bilateral projection and more tube tilt for the unilateral. If you use a lot more tube tilt here, as you can imagine, like if I move the tube into more, uh, I don't have the edit thing on. If I angle the tube more, you can see that in, in an angle like this, then more of the mandible would superpose over the cervical spine. So we use the lesser amount of tube tilt uh, for the bilateral projection, 20, 25 degrees. If you're using the unilateral one, then you can use more tube tilt because the mandible is going to be, again, out of the way. So you won't project the mandible over the articular pillar. Holds down to there. So that's your articular pillar projection. And we'll go and look at that one and practice it. Um, this is what you would, again, hope to achieve here. Again, notice that the light does come up onto the chin there. This is what you hope to achieve by matching the tube tilt with the angle of the facet articulations there. And you're trying to sort of look through the joints as it were. We do our AP lower cervical where we angle up the other way. Obviously, we're not going through the joint surfaces, so you, you don't see the joint spaces very well. And in a perfect world, here's what we would see. The articular pillars, nice little square or rhomboid looking things there. Um, and you can also see the, the arch, so it's sometimes called the, the arch view, posterior arch view, color view, that shows the pillars, and the posterior arch overlay on it pretty well. So that's kind of the perfect world projection for the bilateral one. The unilateral one, we would turn the chin out of the way, and we would just see one side, the other side would be rotated. So that's the pillar view. Um, Yeah, at least that, yes. It's you're gonna have light down to the jugular notch, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then at the south end of things. The south end of things, the other thing we're gonna pick up when we do this today too, will be the esophagus. So these oblique projections and the esophagus. As far as an AP sacroiliac joint projection. The AP angulated lumbosacral spot projection does a really pretty good job of seeing the SI joints, so we don't really teach a specific SI joint AP. Um, so again, you can think of the AP angulated lumbosacral spot as a good SI joint AP. It boils down to get a nice look at it. 
uh, for an oblique projection on the SI joints, okay, we're going to use a 10 by 12 film, 40 inch film focal distance, can be like our other AP views, uh, 80. Uh, takes your prep pretty much like you'd imagine. I use it through the path of the central ray. Patient, again, usually this is so fine. Can you do the <coughs> right? Yes, you can. Um, and the patient positioning is going to be in the posterior oblique position with elevated elevation of the size of the image. So this is what people get confused on. So again, don't, don't get confused here. As I'm standing here looking forward, my sacroiliac joints don't go straight forward, right? They actually have an angle, okay? They go out to the sides like this. Okay, so it makes sense that in the posterior oblique position, if I want to see this SI joint, I have to turn to my left to point that SI joint in a direction where the central ray can go through, okay? So I'm going to be in the LPO position if I don't point my central ray over here at the right SI joint, okay? So the one you elevate off the table is the one that you see, okay? Now, again, SI joints are here. If I use 45 degrees of obliquity on this, what's going to happen? Well, my anterior spine is going to come around the corner. It's going to step on that SI joint. I'm going to defeat the purpose, right? So this is an oblique projection. We're not going to make it a 45 degree oblique like we did with the lumbar spine. This is going to be a shallow oblique. So we're going to use 20, 25 degrees of obliquity of the pelvis. So just a little bit of a bump under there, raise them up. And your central ray is going to go just medial to the anterior spine, okay? Just be the anterior spine. Um, I like to use two tilt on this, okay? It says here optional, okay? For our purposes, it's not optional, okay? In my world, we use it, okay? <laughs> no. um, if you're gonna use 25, or if you use 15 degrees of tube tilt, then obviously you're gonna move your central ray a little bit lower than the ASIS, right? A little bit lower than the interior spot, so come below it a little bit. Do you commonly get enough penetration at 80 kdp for that? Yeah, on your average size person, uh, you do. Again, kdp's are squishy, you know, <laughs> uh, because you're not you're not going through the like on a lateral projection. We have to go through the posterior crest to see if the sacrum and all that. You know, we use 90 there. Um, usually, you are okay with 80. If you want to use 85, that's good. In your larger patients, that works out fine too. Kind of like we do 85 with the lumbar oblique. Same thing, same idea, you can use 85. Um, the other thing. Um, I'm sorry, how much tube tilt did you use? 15. Okay. Yeah. Oh, got it. Sorry. Yeah, 15 yeah. degree. And once again, it's cephalic tube tilt. That makes right. sense, right? Because yeah. of the angle of the sacrum and all. So basically, it's the same tube tilt as if you were doing a sacrum. Okay? It's like you're doing a sacrum. Um, you would use, again, gonial shielding um, because of the proximity and the hanging out parts to the, to the central ray there and all that. Um, there we are with the patient position. And again, it's not important that we get the shoulders up. Like we did lumbar spine, remember it was important that we had both the shoulders and the hips at 45 degrees, right? Okay. For this, again, you don't really care the, if the shoulders are flat, it doesn't matter. As long as the, the pelvis is elevated, we're good, because that's really all we're looking at here. Okay. So this is shown here, kind of a straight up and down shot here. Really no tube tilt. Again, I like to use the tube tilt, uh, the 15 degree tube tilt there. And here's, again, a little diagram kind of showing you where you're at. Uh, there's the anterior spine there. So again, come about an inch medial to it, okay? About an inch medial. And that'll usually put you where your SI joint is. 25, 30 degrees of elevation of the pelvis. So again, you don't want an, so much elevation that this rolls around on top of your SI joint. Uh, you don't want that iliac crest to get too far around the corner. So that's sacroiliac joint that leaks. Uh, and just measure through your central ray. That's all. Uh, make sure you, again, check your film alignment with the central ray at the film plane if you use tube tilt. I mean, have you filled the tube? You got to check it down there at the film plane. Otherwise, if you just look up here and kind of draw an imaginary line down there, put your film there. If you've got 15 degrees of tube tilt, your central ray is going to be on there. And so it can be going north. So that's the sacroiliac joint obliques. Any questions on those? Okay. All right, let's go to the lab and we'll go do some. Uh,
positioning. 